Here's your news for March 25th, 2020. And your headlines for today include, spoiler for Monday Night Raw, WWE booked and canceled a huge match, shocking discoveries about Hana Kimura's death revealed, interesting WrestleMania plans for Hulk Hogan revealed, when was Brian Cage actually signed, who is Asuka's big challenger, why Cody Rhodes used the Stinger Splash and more. We're kicking off today with news from AEW as Mike Tyson's involvement at Double or Nothing won't be a one-off appearance. Fresh off crowning Cody Rhodes as the first AEW TNT champion, AEW confirmed that Tyson will be making his Dynamite debut this Wednesday, though it wasn't listed what he'll be doing. Given that he was backstage at Double or Nothing last year and appeared on this year's show, it's obvious the boxing legend is a big fan of AEW, and time will tell just how long this working relationship will last. We're looking ahead to tonight's edition of Monday Night Raw, as we've got an update on what will be the next challenge for the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders. After facing off on the basketball court and in an axe throwing contest, it's now being reported that the two teams will face off in the most epic of battlefields, the mini golf course. In addition to this challenge, tonight's show will also see United States champion Andrade defend his title against Apollo Crews and a number one contenders match for the Raw Women's Championship between Natalia, Nia Jax, and Charlotte Flair. An edition of MVP's VIP Lounge with WWE Champion Drew McIntyre as the guest has also been announced for the show, and with the Scottish superstar set to face MVP's client Bobby Lashley at Backlash, fans can expect to get physical on tonight's show. Speaking of the WWE Champion, we all know that McIntyre has faced some pretty big names throughout his career, but now the Scotsman has spoken about the one match that didn't take place. While speaking to BT Sport, McIntyre revealed that there were plans for him to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania 36, and Vince had instructed the young superstar to listen to the dead man, describing him as Drew's mentor. McIntyre went on to explain why the match didn't happen, saying, Unfortunately, I wasn't ready at the time. Things worked out the way they worked out, and I believe it led to, instead of myself an Undertaker, Shawn Michaels an Undertaker, the retirement match. It was obviously a phenomenal match, and I could not have delivered on that level at that time. Instead, McIntyre was one of 10 participants in the show's Money in the Bank ladder match, and whilst a match between the two would have been interesting, it's clear that Drew learned plenty from being around the Phenom, even if they didn't meet at WrestleMania. We've got more news from our WWE Champion next as McIntyre has continued to tease a match against boxing star Tyson Fury. Speaking on the Gorilla Position podcast, McIntyre addressed the friendly rivalry between the two, which recently included Fury claiming that McIntyre would go down from his devastating left hooks, like Braun Strowman did. McIntyre replied by issuing the challenge to the Gypsy King and said it'll be a battle of Britain as Drew hopes the match would take place across the pond. He said, He's a smart man is Tyson Fury. He gets it. WWE is a global company in 800 million homes, 180 countries, different languages, and over a billion social media followers. So you get us in the ring for a big Battle of Britain match one day? Get a UK pay-per-view out of it? I'm all about it. The idea of a UK pay-per-view has certainly been something that's been on the cards for a while, as not including UK exclusive house show pay-per-views or NXT events, the company hasn't held a canonical pay-per-view on British soil since SummerSlam 1992 at Wembley Stadium in London. Of course, this potential match relies on Fury's schedule, as a huge match against Anthony Joshua is in the works, but it may be a matter of time before the boxing heavyweight champion and the WWE world champion meet in the ring. We've got an update regarding the tragic passing of Hana Kimura, as more details have emerged on the Stardom Star's final hours. Seen as one of the promotion's hottest young stars, the 22-year-old committed suicide following cyberbullying after an incident following an appearance on the Japanese Netflix series Terrace House. It's now being reported that it was WWE's Kairi Sane who alerted Stardom about the issue, as the former women's tag team champion called fellow Stardom wrestler Jungle Kiona, who went to check on her. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer explained that when Hana sent out a concerning tweet saying goodbye, Nobody in Japan caught it, as it was the middle of the night, though because Sane was in the US, she was awake and acted quickly, 
Sadly, by the time Kiona arrived to Kimura's house at 4 a.m., she had passed away, with her death being ruled down to ingestion of chemicals that at high levels can cause convulsions, shock, coma, and death. Anna's mother requested that no more information about her daughter's death be released, and we would like to send our deepest condolences to Hana's family, friends, and fans at this worst of times. Of course, Hana's suicide following online harassment is a tragedy that should have never happened. But if there is a silver lining to this, it's that it may change the law so that other people aren't treated how she was. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted that Kimura's death had sparked a movement in Japan, and now there are calls for a law to be made that will make online bullying illegal. Speaking about those who pushed Kimaru to her breaking point, Meltzer said, There's tons of people who I guess were threatening her, and they tried to delete their accounts, and I guess what they found out is that she still leave a footprint. So a lot of those people who harassed her into doing what she did are scared. Meltzer added that mainstream Japanese celebrities have also talked up the idea of holding online bullies to account, as have WWE superstars such as Alexa Bliss, who has said that trolls need to be held accountable for what they say. Of course, no amount of laws will be able to bring back the 22-year-old, who was seen as one of stardom's hottest young stars, but hopefully her tragic death will help change the law and make online trolls be held to account. Understandably, Kimura's death caused a huge reaction by the wrestling community, and one person who commented about this tragedy is Rebby Hardy. On Twitter, Rebby criticized online culture and quote, sassy edgelords that comment at wrestlers before concluding that the internet is trash. Though what she was saying may be true from a certain point of view, Rebby's words quickly drew fan backlash, who branded her as a hypocrite given her past comments about Ashley Massaro. Shortly before Ashley's own suicide, Rebby made several derogatory tweets about her, accusing her of bringing pills to Matt's home while he was fighting addiction, and would later add that she didn't care at all about Ashley's death shortly after the former Playboy cover star had taken her own life. Shortly after the backlash from her alleged hypocritical comments about Kimura, Matt Hardy posted a tweet saying he 100% supports his wife and added that they approach attacks online very differently. This situation with Hana, Rebby, and the latter's comments about Ashley is messy to say the least, and hopefully people will be more cautious of what they say before they attack someone online. Now we all know that WrestleMania 36 didn't go how the WWE had originally planned, and now it turns out that having the show move to the Performance Center and be a two-day event weren't the only changes to the show. According to reports, one plan that was changed was for a planned appearance by Hulk Hogan, as Wrestling News is reporting that the Hulkster was planned to win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which ultimately never happened. They wrote, The idea was he wouldn't take any bumps. We would work it so he would only have to eliminate one or two guys at the end, and then he would get his big celebration at the end with his music. It would have been perfect because he lives in the Tampa area. Of course, the match, as well as the Women's Battle Royal, never took place due to social distancing rules regarding the current global situation. It was also reported that Vince McMahon didn't shoot down the idea which was on the table by late February, and while Hogan never agreed to win the match either, it would have made for a very interesting end to the Battle Royal. We're looking ahead to tonight's edition of Raw, as WWE has put a poll out on who the fans think will be crowned the number one contender for the Raw Women's Championship. In the triple threat between Natalya, Charlotte Flair, and Nia Jax, the irresistible force is the favorite, currently with 42% of the vote, though the queen isn't far behind her with 41%. As for Natalya, the third generation superstar is a distant third with about 17% of the vote, as it looks like fans are expecting Jax to challenge the WWE Raw Women's Champion Asuka at Backlash. We are sticking with WWE's women's division next as Liv Morgan has experimented with a new look and a new haircut. Posting a photo online claiming that she's a sugar plum, it looks like the former Riot Squad member is wearing a wig, as she also wore bright red lipstick to complement her shorter hair. We are not quite certain what Morgan meant from this tweet, as Sugar Plum could be a movie character she's playing for all we know, but at least the Raw superstar is keeping herself entertained in these unprecedented times. We've got an update from the sad passing of Shad Gaspard now, as we previously reported that a mysterious donation of $40,000 to a GoFundMe page to help Shad's family may have been from John Cena.
The reason fans believe that this was Cena is that the donor's name is CTCRIP, which many believed was a reference to the CTC name sprayed on JBL's limo back in the day, which stood for Crime Time C Nation. On Instagram, Cena posted an image of the vandalized limousine where he spray painted those three letters, which a lot of fans saw as Cena confessing to being the one who donated the $40,000. We'll have to see if anyone else steps up and claims to be the generous donor, but knowing Cena's kindness and his vast fortune, it certainly seems likely that this incredible donation came from Big Match John himself. Speaking of big men, Brian Cage made a big impression during his AEW debut at Double or Nothing, as he now has a championship opportunity at the AEW world title. Shortly after his debut, fans question when exactly did Cage join the company. And according to Tony Khan during the media scrum, Cage signed back in January and has been sitting at home for the better part of five months waiting to debut. With Cage now the number one contender for the world title, fans can prepare to see him and Jon Moxley battle at Fighter Fest, though we're still waiting for a date or location to be announced for this event. Back to WWE now, and in preparation for the latest edition of The Undertaker Last Ride docuseries, the WWE's YouTube channel has revealed a startling confession from the phenom himself. Watching back his historic WrestleMania 26 match against Shawn Michaels, which saw HBK lose and retire from the ring, Taker said that he was jealous of Shawn, adding, I'm so envious of Shawn because he was able to walk away and he was good with it. Do I wish I had that kind of clarity? Absolutely. I wish I had that clarity. He had the clarity before going into the match. Hopefully, when I have the match I'm looking for, in one way or another, I have that clarity. Okay, that's it. Obviously, Sean did return to the ring for the Crown Jewel 2018 tag match between DX and the Brothers of Destruction, and whilst that match wasn't a great match to say the least, it doesn't take away from the incredible, emotional contest between the Showstopper and the Phenom in 2010. Back to AEW next, and ever since it was confirmed that Sting has parted ways with WWE, there's been plenty of speculation on the Hall of Famer going to the other promotion. While speaking to Sports Illustrated, Cody Rhodes, who used the Stinger Splash at Double or Nothing, spoke about the icon, and said that people speculate on every single thing he does. Speaking about Sting directly, Rhodes added, I don't know what his schedule is like or where he's at in this world, but nothing would please me more than to stand in a ring across from Sting. There has been no contact, but that's my way of reaching out. Time will tell whether Cody gets his wish, but with the financial backing of Tony Khan and AEW being one of the handful of companies to still be operating, it certainly seems possible that the WWE legend could be competing in an AEW ring very soon.